Hello, and welcome to the Drug Discovery World podcast, a podcast covering topics around drug discovery and development, pharma, and biotech. My name is Giles, and I'm here to take you through this episode. Today's episode is taken from our Spring 2019 issue, and is part three of three episodes on the topic of integrated platform drug discovery and development companies. This article, part three, was written by Dr. Stephen Naylor and Dr. Kirkwood A. Pritchard Jr. So now onto the main article, Integrated Platform Drug Discovery and Development Companies, Comparative Analysis. Large pharmaceutical companies have struggled to efficiently implement tools, technologies and platforms into their drug discovery and development programs. More recently, there have been attempts by small to medium-sized pharmaceutical companies to create in-house, integrated platform drug discovery and development, PD3, capabilities. This strategy does not come without risks, but has quietly been implemented to increase drug candidate efficacy and safety and pipeline numbers. In some cases, this has resulted in much vaunted success, as epitomized by the Moderna IPO in late 2018. Although the complexities of such efforts should not be underestimated, it is clear that the new PD3 business model is being adopted and utilized. In part three in this episode, we evaluate this new paradigm and discuss the common traits and themes of successful PD3 companies. Last year, small to mid-sized pharmaceutical companies were much more successful than their larger counterparts by 68% to 32% respectively in producing FDA-approved new molecular entities, NMEs, and new therapeutic biological products, NTBs. The flexibility of small to mid-sized companies facilitates dexterity of thinking and rapid adaption and adoption of new approaches. One such example is the development and utilization of an integrated platform drug discovery and development, PD3, model. We described this phenomenon in the last episode, and discuss the vagaries of implementing a PD3 approach. We suggested that Moderna and others have demonstrated that implementation of such efforts can significantly drive company valuation. Furthermore, initial case studies appear to suggest that the valuation is fueled by an innovative and validated platform. Although the complexities of such efforts should not be underestimated, we concluded that it is clear that the new paradigm driven by PD3 efforts is here to stay. In stark contrast, Ben Joseph and Manning have questioned the relevance and necessity of a PD3 approach for smaller companies. They argued that the platform concept, with a few notable exceptions, is seldom capital efficient and has failed to offer a commercial return. The focus of such companies should be on the lead product and allocation of time and money in a capital efficient manner toward that very product. In addition, they gave the opinion that small company management teams fail to differentiate the value of a technology-derived product, i.e. a therapeutic drug, versus the value of a specific platform technology. This is an oft-cited criticism, and it has been argued that most small pharmaceutical companies do not have the bandwidth to carry out such an approach. The consequences are dilution of effort, poor tactical and strategic decision-making, lack of focus, and considerable risk enhancement. Ben Joseph and Manning concluded that such an approach is best left to Big Pharma. We discuss these contrarian viewpoints of companies utilising PD3 approaches and assess such contributions to valuation. Moderna and PD3 Revisited In the previous episodes, we described a PD3 company as a corporate entity that contains 1. Scientific and technological core competencies 2 competencies are utilized to generate new therapeutic drug candidates, and three, enhance application of competencies across a range of disease indications. The platform of such companies can consist of proprietary hardware, biological, molecular, and digital technologies, or some hybrid mix of some or all of them combined. Thong has suggested that these companies must initially be able to generate a revenue stream and establish a credible technology and or service provider capability. As the company evolves and develops a sustainable reputation associated with aggressive fundraising, 
then it can start to fund its own platform-driven proprietary projects and create its own drug candidates in specific disease indications. During this stage of growth, the platform company should partner with large pharmaceutical companies which fund the expensive late-stage clinical trials. The company may ultimately transform itself into a fully-fledged pharma or biopharma company, suffering all the travails of risk, but potentially enjoying all the rich rewards of its own drug candidates reaching the market. Moderna Evaluation We also described in detail the history, platform, drug pipeline and business model of Moderna. The company was founded in 2010 and went public in December 2018. However, Moderna does not have any commercially available drugs on the market. The valuation of the company was primarily driven by the mRNA platform. Nubara Fein, in an interview last year, stated that I'd say the one big shift we've seen is that people are making this less of a bet on a single drug and more of a bet on a platform which can produce many drugs. And in that regard, those companies require a lot more capital, but also provide a lot more opportunity for reward than the single bet that used to be the biotech companies of the past. Afayan asserts that PD3 strategies can help facilitate increased valuation of drug discovery and development companies. Indeed, we gave the opinion that the valuation of Moderna dramatically increased from $2.5 billion up to $7.5 billion prior to the IPO, mostly due to its perceived platform capabilities. But it should not be overlooked that Moderna now possesses a robust mRNA drug discovery and development pipeline of 21 mRNA drug candidates, which clearly contributes to its stratospheric valuation. Moderna IPO Moderna executed a successful IPO on December 7th, 2018. In this much-anticipated event, Moderna raised $604.3 million by selling 26.3 million shares at $23 per share, valuing the company at $7.5 billion. This was the largest IPO in the biotech sector to date for a pre-revenue company. The company started trading on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol MRNA. However, the irrational exuberance of the Moderna IPO quickly soured as the new shares lost a fifth of their value on the first day of trading. Investors took stock of a company with no market drug products, and a class of potential drugs that had never been assessed nor approved by any US, European, or Asian regulatory authority. In addition, cash burn had been very high, with the company spending close to $550 million in total operating expenses in 2018, and it had incurred net losses each year since inception in 2010. At the end of 2018, the company had an accumulated debt of $865.2 million. The stock ultimately hit a low of $13.52 on December 26, 2018. But more recently, January to March 2019, has been trading in the range of $19 to $22. Investors have priced in the value of the innovative platform of Moderna, but are now waiting to see whether it can deliver in terms of marketable drug products. Comparative Analysis – PD3 Companies Currently, there are more than 100 different PD3 companies. At least five of these companies are classified as unicorns, privately held companies valued at more than a billion dollars. The size and valuation of these companies spans a considerable range that includes behemoths such as publicly traded entities like Ionis Pharmaceuticals, Akia Therapeutics, and Applinx. However, the list also contains much smaller, privately held companies such as Serenus, we now discuss and compare a number of these smaller companies, along with their business models and valuations. RNA PD3 Companies RNA-based therapeutic approaches have generated significant attention in recent years. They include Antisense, RNAi, Aptimas, MicroRNA, Mimix, Anti-MIRs, and Synthetic mRNA Technologies. Moderna is the epitome of such companies and has enjoyed marked financial success in its PD3 mRNA drug therapy endeavours. It is interesting to compare and contrast Moderna's success with that of some of its PD3 competitors. Firstly, let's consider CureVac. CureVac is a biopharmaceutical company that develops mRNA therapeutics in direct competition to Moderna. 
The company was founded in 2000, and is located in Tübingen, Germany. It has around 390 employees, and an annual revenue stream of $300,000. The company has raised $431.5 million, and it remains privately held. The drug therapy pipeline consists of 17 potential drug candidates in cancer, prophylactic vaccines, and molecular-based therapies. Four candidates are in phase one, eight in preclinical stages, and the other five are still in discovery. It is currently valued at $1.65 billion. And next, Regulus Therapeutics. Regulus Therapeutics develops microRNA drugs for fibrosis, cardiovascular, and immune-related disorders. The company was founded in 2007 and is based in San Diego, California. The company sprinted to an IPO in October 2012 and has raised around $175 million, that includes the IPO of $45 million. It currently employs around 60 individuals. The pipeline consists of eight potential drug candidates, one phase two, one phase one, and the remaining six in preclinical evaluation. Revenues for 2018 were less than $1 million, and the current market capitalization is only $9.53 million, down from the IPO valuation of $136.5 million. Anlam Pharmaceuticals was the very first commercial entity to attempt the development of RNAi therapeutics in a variety of disease states. The company is based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA, and was founded in 2002. The company filed for an IPO in February 2004, raising $26.4 million, and has accrued $417.5 million to date in equity investments. The company has more than 1,000 employees. The platform built by the company was not as focused and directed as a typical PD3 company. It was assembled out of necessity, since Anlam pioneered the therapeutic use of RNAi therapeutics. This has resulted in a robust pipeline of drug candidates that includes five phase three and four phase two drug candidates. One candidate, Gavosran, is being registered as a commercial drug in an NDA filing. In addition, Patisaran, brand name on Patro, was the first ever FDA-approved RNAi therapy for the treatment of hereditary transthyrotin-mediated amyloidosis. The current market capitalization of Alnam is $9.1 billion. And now, back to Moderna. Moderna is a purpose-built PD3 company. The articulation by Nubar Fayan on the value of such an approach has been leveraged by lucrative fundraising and valuation and market capitalization effect in the past roughly eight years. This is in spite of the company being several years away from demonstrating the efficacy and validation of the platform by producing a regulatory-approved drug. It is edifying to compare the fortunes of CureVac, a direct competitor of Moderna. The former has not been aggressive in promoting its PD3 capability and has a much longer history, but with a comparable drug candidate pipeline to Moderna. However, privately held CureVac only comprises around 25% of the market cap of Moderna. Even more noteworthy is the comparative performance metrics of Regulus Therapeutics. This PD3 company, in its 12 year existence, has experienced dramatic highs, the IPO in 2012, and lows, current market capitalization of $9.53 million. Ben Joseph and Manning might argue the Regulus Therapeutics is a company which allowed platform development to be distractive from the true mission of producing new RNA therapeutic drugs. The contrast in the history and performance metrics of Moderna versus Alnlam is instructive. The latter has been active for 17 years and pioneered the use of RNAi therapeutics. Alnlam developed a PD3 approach out of necessity and has, for the most part in its history, emphasized its drug discovery and development capabilities and the development of a robust pipeline. The current Analam pipeline is impressive and includes a marketed product on Patro. The regulatory approval of this RNAi drug is a validation of the Analam platform. This is in stark contrast to the more modest pipeline of Moderna and as yet non-validated platform. In spite of these significant metric differentials, the current Moderna market capitalization is still a comparable around 80% of Alnlam's valuation. Artificial Intelligence PD3 Companies Data Analytics, Knowledge Management, and Artificial Intelligence 
have experienced explosive growth trends over the past decade. In particular, the advent of AI drug discovery and development efforts is noteworthy. It is estimated that around 130 small companies now have business expertise and a focus in AI drug discovery and development, and most large pharma companies have also attempted to develop or bring in-house such capabilities, as exemplified by the dramatic increase in large pharma collaborations in AI drug discovery and development. The breakdown of small company artificial intelligence drug discovery and development capabilities is as follows. Software, AI services, around 66%. Operational services, 14%. Drug candidates as a service, 14%. And in-house drug development candidates, around 6%. This has attracted frenzied activity on the part of the investment community. And venture capital, private equity monies are now readily available for AI drug discovery and development companies. Benevolent AI is an artificial intelligence drug discovery and development company specializing in machine learning. The company was founded in 2013 and is located in London in the UK. It employs around 300 people and last year had annual revenues of around $2 million. The company has raised $207.7 million and is a privately held entity. Benevolent AI currently offers both operational and drug candidate services to third parties and has no drug candidate pipeline. However, based on this focused AI drug discovery and development approach, the company is valued at $2 billion. It is also now transitioning into an AI PD3 company with an emphasis on ALS. Cure Hunter Incorporated is a pioneer in the application of artificial intelligence to drug discovery and development through its proprietary machine learning graph network theory platform. The company was founded in 2007 and is located in Portland, Oregon, USA. During the initial years, the company provided AI-based, evidence-based medicine services to patients on a subscription basis. It transitioned into also providing potential drug candidates to pharmaceutical companies and then into generating its own drug candidates as an AI PD3 company. Currently, the management team is reassessing the business model. Disclosure, Dr. Stephen Naylor, one of the authors of this paper, serves as a board advisor to the company. Verge Genomics is a purpose-built AI PD3 company, founded in 2015 and located in San Francisco, California, USA. It employs around 20 people, with annual revenues of $3 million. The company has raised $36 million and has developed strong academic partnerships with a focus in ALS and Parkinson's disease. The company does not yet have a drug candidate pipeline, given its recent formation, and has a modest valuation. Benevolent AI is a unicorn company with a valuation of $2 billion. The company is transitioning towards becoming an AI PD3 company, with a focus on developing in-house drug candidates in ALS. However, the current valuation of Benevolent AI is predicated on its AI drug discovery and development efforts, providing services and drug candidates to third-party clients. Ben Johnson and Manning would vociferously support such focused efforts. In contrast, it could be argued that Cure Hunter is testimony to a company lacking focus. The company struggled to attract equity investments in both its AI drug discovery and development and AI PD3 endeavors. However, in this case, it would be an oversimplification. Cure Hunter was almost a decade ahead of all competitors in terms of AI drug discovery and development. It enjoyed some real success in terms of its evidence-based medicine subscription model, but struggled to convince investors as to the value of AI drug discovery and development before it became the shiny new bouncing ball that everyone now chases today. Thus, part of the lesson from consideration of the Cure Hunter situation is the matter of timing and the punishing effects of the technology hype cycle. Verge Genomics is a dedicated AI PD3 company. This young company is still building out its corporate infrastructure and developing alliances with major academic institutions to pursue the development of drug candidates in ALS and Parkinson's disease. It is too early to determine the trajectory of this company at present, but the investment community enthusiasm for AI PD3 has facilitated the company's fundraising efforts, with a war chest of $36 million. A number of other AI PD3 companies find themselves in a similar predicament, 
and includes a number of other dedicated AI PD3 companies, such as AI Therapeutics, Oranza Incorporated, Berg Health, Insilico Medicine, and RevivMed. Future evaluation of this sector will determine whether PD3 companies are a fad or a real trend. Drug Repurposing PD3 Companies Drug Repurposing, DRPX, is used as a catch-all term that is defined as the concept of an active pharmaceutical ingredient at any stage of the life cycle, and regardless of the success or misfortune it has encountered, serving a therapeutic purpose that is significantly different from the originally intended one. A number of DRPX companies qualify as PD3 corporate entities, and we'll now discuss a few. Firstly, BioVista. BioVista is a pioneering company in both DRPX and PD3, long before both approaches were included in the popular lexicon. The company was founded in 1993 by the Poseidus brothers and is based in Charlottesville, Virginia, USA, as well as Athens, Greece. It currently has three employees, with annual revenues of an estimated $2.2 million in 2018, and is still a privately held company. The company was originally an AI PD3 company with a vibrant drug candidate pipeline. However, more recently, it has transitioned to an AI drug discovery and development company, providing operational and drug candidate services to the pharma sector using its proprietary AI systematic drug repositioning platform. Recursion Pharmaceutical is a dedicated DRPX PD3 company founded in 2013 and based in Salt Lake City, Utah, USA. The company has approximately 120 employees, with around $5 million in revenue for 2018. The company has raised $141.3 million in a combination of equity investments as well as debt financing. The current pipeline consists of 10 drug candidates, with two in phase one trials, and the remaining eight in preclinical stage, with a current valuation of an estimated $275 million. Melior is a DRPX PD3 company predicated on its Therotrace mouse phenotype model screening platform. The company was founded in 2005 and is based in Exxon, Pennsylvania, USA. The company has around 25 employees, with an annual revenue of around $10 million in 2018. The company raised around $10 million in a seed round for Melior Discovery. However, since then, has provided service-generated revenues to support the PD3 efforts. The current business model is different from other DRPX PD3 companies. Each time a drug candidate is identified, a new corporate entity is formed that holds the IP and drug candidate development responsibilities. Currently, two companies exist focused on type 2 diabetes, as well as NASH in Medial Pharmaceutical 1 and Parkinson's disease in Medial Pharmaceuticals 2. The valuation of these companies combined is predicated on the innovative PD3 self sustaining model of medial discovery and the drug candidates in the pipeline of medial pharmaceuticals 1 and 2. BioVista started as a DRPX PD3 company before the concept was even articulated. This was done in concert with service provisions as a source of revenue. BioVista demonstrated innovation, creativity, and initial success with a pipeline of drug candidates. However, problems ensued in attracting investment funds to develop drug candidates. The parallels with CureHunter are striking, and another example of a company being too far ahead of the acceptance curve. In contrast, Recursion Pharmaceuticals started its DRPX PD3 program in a much more conducive timeframe, founded in 2013, where investors at least understood the potential advantages as well as disadvantages to such an approach. This acceptance has manifested in the form of significant investments into recursion pharmaceuticals, which has facilitated a burgeoning pipeline and steady growth of the company. Dr. Andrew Eum, founder and CEO of Melior, has stated that the company is comprised of a self-sustaining discovery core and risk-laden, value-generating pharmaceutical companies. Valuation is very much a perceptional quantity. This business approach has kept us away from the investment community, and like Moderna, in stealth mode, but for an entirely different reason. I have no basis to say that, as a PD3 company, we are receiving increased valuation, 
because we are not testing this in any way. While this statement by Reum is understandable, it can also be argued that the way that Meliora has constructed its PD3 approach is highly innovative and led to a company with high quality drug candidate assets and a process that is self-sustaining as well as significantly de-risked. The epitome of how to increase value in your company. Conclusions The argument concerning the valuation of PD3 companies articulated in this episode is still being contested. The examples discussed provide ammunition to support either supposition. However, Sachs has argued that the PD3 model has given rise to the third wave biotech IPOs, wherein public companies, technology, has evolved to the point of providing personalized medicine backed by wide-ranging biological platforms, that is, underlying tech that can be used to produce an eclectic mix of drugs across the disease spectrum, has given both drug makers and investors more cover. In the case of Moderna, the PD3 approach has provided 21 different drug candidate assets. In the minds of investors, this means that a single failure of a drug candidate does not necessarily mean catastrophe for the company, since other pipeline candidates can supplant the failed entity. This argument by Sachs is dependent on the fact that the underlying platform technology is valid and continues to provide bona fide drug candidates. Whether or not that happens is still somewhat of an unknown. But Sachs predicts that public offerings by PD3 companies will continue to thrive in 2019. In business, arguments are often settled by the refrain, follow the money, in determining success. The authors would like to thank Dr. Andrew Reum for his thoughtful analysis of valuation as it pertains to PD3 companies. This series of articles was written by Dr. Stephen Naylor, Dr. Kirkwood A. Pritchard Jr. and Dr. Urban A. Kiernan. Dr. Stephen Naylor is a co-founder, COO and board chairman of iMetabolic Biopharma Corporation. He is also the co-founder, CEO, and board chairman of Renurogen LLC, a virtual pharmaceutical company developing therapies for the treatment of neurological diseases. In addition, he is the founder, chairman, and CEO of My Health Inc., a systems network biology level diagnostics company in the health, wellness, and precision medicine sector. Dr. Kirkwood A. Pritchard Jr. is a co-founder, CSO, and board director of Renurogen LLC. He is also a co-founder and board director of HDL-DX, a diagnostics company developing an assay to determine functionality of HDL. Dr. Urban A. Kiernan is a co-founder, CEO, and board director of iMetabolic Biopharma Corporation, a biopharmaceutical company developing platform-engineered precision medicine drugs for the treatment of obesity-related diseases. He has almost 20 years of industrial experience in the biotechnology and life sciences fields. If you've enjoyed this series of episodes and want more content from Drug Discovery World, then you can subscribe free of charge by visiting our website at dgw-online.com, where you can also view all previous articles, including references and images, and download the original PDFs. All the links are in the show notes. If you're enjoying the podcast, then do leave us a review and subscribe, and you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you for listening, and we'll hope to see you in our next episode.